Today I'm going to finish assembling the basic tool kit that you're going to need to do hammer engraving. I made the hammer head in the previous video. Today I'm just going to quickly put a handle on that hammer head and I'm going to be modifying one of the coal chisels that I already have made up into an engraving chisel. The material I'm using for the handle is red oak. You can use just about anything. It's not really a hammer handle that gets a lot of abuse or that really needs to take a lot of pounding. So any kind of a wood that has a fairly long stringy grain will work just fine. Hickory or ash, of course, are preferred woods for handles, but red oak on a light duty handle like this works just fine. I'm going to be blocking out the shape with the turning saw and later on I'll continue refining that with a spoke shave and I'll probably finish off everything you know on a sander just to get the lines right and to get a smoother finish. I usually shape my hammer eyes so the taper is only on two sides. So if you look at the left hand photograph, that represents a side view of the hammer head and the dotted lines represent the actual shape of the hammer eye. You can see how they're parallel in this cross section. The drawing on the right represents the front view of the hammer and the dotted lines show the location of the tapers. These lines are exaggerated but I just wanted to point out that that uh, is the sloping sides of the taper. So when I'm fitting my handle I make sure that it fits tight front and back and I only have to wedge in the center to spread it out to the sides to get it to fit. I find this much easier to deal with on small hammers than the usual hourglass shape that you find on commercially made hammers. And of course fitting the hammer head to the handle is always a fairly slow process. You have to try it, see where it's hanging up, shave off a little bit more material, try it again, and just keep working away until you get the fit that you want. So here's the fully assembled hammer with the handle roughed in. I'm going to take it over to the sander now and spend a few minutes just refining the shape of the handle. Now that the hammer is completed, I'm going to turn my attention to the chisel and I'm going to use this piece of pine to illustrate what I'm doing to the chisel because the modifications are so minute and microscopic basically that it's going to be impossible to film. So I've blown it up here to illustrate what I'm doing. First thing I need to do is grind a rounded blunt knife edge to the bottom face of the chisel. I don't think the actual dimensions of this curve matters a whole lot as long as it comes to a point at the bottom edge of the tool. So this is the basic shape of the chisel. The knife edge is at the bottom and the front face is ground at approximately a 45 degree angle. Next I'm going to grind a tiny flat face on the nose of the chisel and that face is roughly at 15 degrees to the bottom edge. So when this 15 degree angle is combined with the 45 degree angle of the face that gives us the included angle of 60 degrees which is what we're always aiming for for a metal cutting tool. And the final step is to hone in a 90 degree point on this short face and that point is actually what's going to be doing the cutting. And here's a look at it actual size.
So now you're ready to start the hours of practice that it's going to take to become even mildly proficient at this. The first thing you're going to need to do is recycle a lot of scrap steel into practice plates. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be anything special. The first thing that you need to establish is the feel for the chisel and you need to develop an ability to engrave a very nice straight and uniform line. So here I have a short length of flat bar and I've taken the time to grind the scale off of the surface. So that gives me a nice clean work surface to start from. The scale is quite a bit harder than the actual steel and that will dull the chisel's edge very, very quickly. Driving this chisel is kind of a balancing act. You control the depth of the cut by raising and lowering the handle end of the chisel. And you can change the visual characteristics of the line by tipping the chisel to the left or to the right. So cutting an even line is a combination of very light, very even hammer blows so that the chisel advances at a very consistent rate. And then adjusting the angle of the chisel so that it maintains a constant chip depth. And I've done enough of this to know that the evidence that you're doing it right is a perfectly formed, you know, chip at coming off of the chisel. But you can't use that chip as a reference for how you're doing because the chip is material that's removed from the plate. So if you see that the chip is coming out too thick, it's too late to correct it at that point. What you need to be able to develop is a sensitivity to the hammer blows and you know I honestly don't know what else I haven't done that long enough but there has to be a feeling developed to know that you're doing it right and as I said the evidence comes out as a perfectly formed chip but it has to be at the time you can just tell if you're going too deep or you're going too shallow and you can correct it right at that hammer blow where there's a problem and that is what takes the time and the practice it isn't a complicated process but to be able to develop that sensitivity just takes hours and hours to do and that's just the way it is and there's no way around that you know you just have to put the time in and play around with the process so this video is just basically designed to give you a starting point uh, we're going to be learning together on this because I really don't know a lot about this and I want to learn more so as I do I'll be putting out other videos that will describe the process in greater detail but at least now you have you know, the ability to make the tools and to get out there and start working on it. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out, and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.